Hi, I'm Tom Nahumi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration, I will give you an overview of the new Parflex 3.5 replication feature. Parflex enables native asynchronous replication for storage-only configurations. Replication can be used to quickly and easily recover from a physical or logical disaster, to migrate data, to test data at the remote site, or to offload backups. Parflex implementation is designed to allow a sub-minute RPO, reducing the data loss to minimal in case of a disaster recovery. As with all other Parflex data services, replication is elastic, can scale online by adding or removing nodes, flexible and easy to manage. It enables instant tests and failover operations. For the purpose of this demo, I deployed two Parflex 3.5 systems. My primary site called ACME HQ. As you can see, I'm running typical production workload on this cluster. In addition to the IOPS and bandwidth metrics, the new HTML5 UI allows us to see replication bandwidth between the replicated clusters. My secondary site called ACME London. As you can see, I'm running workloads on this cluster as well and replicating it back to the source cluster. Now, let's take a look at the replication configuration to determine how the systems are peered. By navigating to the peer systems from the source cluster, we can see the remote array as well. The connection is secured by certificates on both sites. In this setup, we have two remote consistency groups and two-way replication is configured. The replication consistency group, RCG, is a logical container for volumes whose application data needs to be replicated consistently to the other side. For example, if you replicate a database and its transaction log, you need a remote copy of each of the database volumes to reflect an image from the same point in time. You can achieve this by placing all of the database volumes in one RCG. By selecting the CG, we can see useful configuration information about it. We can also see the real-time replication bandwidth for each and every replicated CG. By clicking on the volume spares, we can see volume details such as size, storage pool, direction, and peer volume on the remote site. We can also add or remove volume spares at any given time. Now, it's time to demonstrate how simple it is to configure a replication session in Parflex 3.5. We go to the source site and create new volume with the size of 256 gigabyte. Then, select the storage pool we want to create this volume from and the protection domain. Volumes in a volume pair must have the same size, so the next step is to create a volume on the target site and map it to the target host. Remote Consistency Group is an entity that includes a set of consistent volume pairs. The volume on the source site from a single protection domain is replicated to a remote volume from a single protection domain on the target. This creates a consistent pair of volumes. From the Parflex UI, in the left plane, click Replication and RCGs. In the right pane, click Add. In the Add RCG wizard, enter the information for the RCG. On the general page, enter the RCG name, enter the number of RPO minutes. This is the amount of time of data loss tolerated if replication between the systems is compromised. Select the source protection domain, select the target system and the target protection domain and click Next. On the Add Replication Pairs page, click the volume from the source column and then click the same size of the volume from the target column. Click Add Pair and the volume pair is added. Then click Next. On the Review Pairs page, ensure the correct source and volume pair are selected, and then 
click Add RCG and Start Replication. When Replication is first activated for an RCG, the target volumes need to be synchronized with the source volume. For each volume pair, the entire contents of each source volume are copied to the corresponding target volume. The initial synchronizations occurs while all applications are running and performing I.O. Any writes to an area of the volume that has already been synchronized will be sent to the journal. Writes to an area of the volume that has not already been synchronized will be ignored. As the updated contact will be copied over eventually as part of the synchronization. Now, let's test the replication we've just configured and run a failover to the target site. I'm connecting to the source host and formatting the volumes with a file system. Then, I'm mounting it and copying some files to it. I'm also adding a timestamp on the volume as a text file. Now, it's time to run a failover test. Before running a real failover, we can run a test failover which does not affect the source volume. From the Parflex UI, in the left pane, click Replication and RCGs. In the right pane, select the relevant RCG checkbox and click Manage and then Test Failover. In the Test Failover dialog box, click Start Test Failover. In the RCG test failover, using target volume dialog box, click Proceed. By navigating to the target host, I can see that the volume is now accessible and the timestamp I created is matching. Now, let's unmount the volume and run a real failover. I'm navigating back to the RCG page and stopping the test failover. Now, I'm ready to start a real failover. There are two options when choosing failover of an RCG. Switch over. This option is a complete sync and failover between the source and the target. This means IOs are stopped on the source and then source and target volumes are synced. Access mode is changed on the target volumes to the target host. Roles are switched and finally the new source volumes access mode is changed to read-write. The other option is latest point in time. The system prevents any write to the source volume with this option. In the case of a planned failover, we have another option to reverse the replication direction back to the primary site. Now, let's go back to the target host and remount the volume. As we can see, we still can access the data. Now, I'm updating the timestamp and then failing back the volume to the primary site. By connecting to the primary host and remounting the volume, we can validate the latest changes by opening the timestamp file. As we can see, it's also updated. I really hope you will find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.